In this video, I will give you the ultimate guide to starting a Shopify print-on-demand store step by step. We will go through all the steps from start to finish to create a store like this and list your first product on it through a print-on-demand platform. By the way, this video is not sponsored by Shopify because I honestly think that even if you already have a print-on-demand store on Etsy or another platform, you should also set up your own store because this way you're in control of it and not a third-party website. To create your Shopify store, I found for you a special promo that allows you to set up a store for just $1 and the link will be in the description below. Yes, it's an affiliate link, but no pressure at all. If you choose to use it, thank you for supporting my channel. First, enter your email and click Start here. Shopify will ask you a few questions, but you can just skip most of them because they don't matter much. Then select your country, click Next, and once you are done with this initial set setup, you will be inside the Shopify dashboard. Now comes the fun part – customizing your store. Go to Online Store, then click Themes, and don't stick to the default Dawn theme because too many stores already use it. Besides that, Shopify has so many awesome free themes that I actually think there is no need to use a paid one. Just select the theme that will be the best match for your niche or product category and then click Add. And once the theme is installed, click Customize. Start by clicking the Theme Settings button over here and then head to the Logo section. Click Select Image, upload your logo and check how it looks in the header of your store. Next, add a favicon. That's the little square icon in your browser tab. You can easily create one like this in Canva by placing your logo in, in a circle. Once it's uploaded, Shopify will handle the resizing down to 32 pixels. If you don't have a logo yet, no problem, you can use Canva's free logo templates to create one very fast. Here is how I created mine. Just do a quick search, for example, I looked for an abstract art logo and I found this one, customized it and downloaded it as a PNG. Now let's move on to the color settings. Pick a background color that fits your brand. Um, I recommend you as a beginner to just go the combination colors that are suggested here, because you know, our goal is to get started and not to get lost here in really small details. Next, update your store's typography by changing the fonts for headings and the body text. Shopify offers tons of fonts, so select something that represents your brand's vibe. Next, in the layout settings, adjust your page width. I actually recommend you to keep it at 1200 pixels and not make it wider, because this way it will be easier for you to arrange high-quality images for store banners and for ads. Then you can go to social media settings add the links to your social media accounts, and if you don't have them, just skip the step because you can always add them later. Next, don't miss what I'm going to do here. You need to look at the middle of the screen and to change from the home page settings to your store's checkout page. It's important to make your store look professional, so I would definitely go into the settings of this page, add your logo and change the accent and button colors that match your brand better than the default colors. Another important thing is that you need to do is to add all the policy pages, including your shipping policy page. This is where you will outline your shipping terms. So if a customer has questions or complaints, you can just direct them to this page and say, by placing an order, you agreed to these terms. So exit the theme editor and go to settings and then policies. Shopify offers default templates for refund, privacy and terms of service policies. You can customize these templates to suit your store, such as modifying the refund policy if you are in print-on-demand business that doesn't offer refunds for change-of-mind purchases. And if you need help drafting your shipping policy page, just ask ChatGPT for assistance like this. Just make sure to check estimated shipping times with your print provider. And then you can copy the suggested text customize it, add your shop name and other details specific to your store. What I like here is that it even gives you the text with all the formatting. For the privacy policy, it will be automatically generated in your store, but be sure to check at the bottom of the page for any missing details, or maybe you would like to correct something. Keep in mind that the most important details are your store's contact information. 
After saving your policies, create additional store pages. Go to online store and then pages, and you can add other pages like about us or frequently asked questions. Now that your main store pages are looking good, we need to move on. But before we can customize the rest of the home page, we will need to add some products. Since the widgets here display product information, you will want to upload your items first, right? So we need to actually create these products. And in order to do this, we will need a print-on-demand app first. So for this tutorial, we will be using Gelato. I partnered with them today because Gelato has great quality of products, competitive pricing, and intuitive interface that is easy for a beginner to get started in print-on-demand business. To install Gelato, find in the left menu this tab called Add Apps. Here, just scroll down and click this link to visit Shopify App Store. Search for Gelato. See, this print-on-demand provider has 4.8 out of 5 average reviews on Shopify Store, which shows that many store owners really enjoy using it. Now click Install. After confirming the installation, you will be prompted to log in with your Gelato account. Or create one if you don't have it yet. It has a forever free plan. And I have a special link to Gelato in the description below. Sign up for free through my link gelato.com slash Anastasia and get a 50% off your first order. You will see here that you can start creating and adding your existing products, but before that, I recommend you to do two important steps. First, go to your Gelato dashboard, find stores in the left menu and enter your store name. Second, go to your Gelato account settings in the right, on the right side, click on Billing and add a payment method, whether it's a credit card, PayPal or Payoneer. Why is this important? When you sell a product, the customer's payment takes time to be processed by the bank, usually about two days. But you will need to pay Gelato upfront to print and ship the item. So your payment method is added so that Gelato can charge you for the product and you will receive the customer's payment through Shopify a few days later. Now that we have Gelato installed, let's add some products to our store. First, go to the menu on the left-hand side and select Product Catalog. And you can, of course, have a look at the variety of products you can print on, including clothing, uh, homeware items, stationery, and wall art. And for this tutorial, I will go with wall art and posters because Gelato has an excellent quality of all their paper products. In the wall art category, we will find a variety of poster options. I'll go with wooden framed posters. Next, I will choose the premium matte paper option. I think that museum quality is not necessary for someone who wants to hang this wall art at home. And besides that, the more expensive option would eat up my profit margins. I'm going to select the 30 by 40 centimeter size, which I think is ideal for most homes and it seems to be the most popular. Then I'll pick the vertical orientation and the frame color. I also like that it has an option of a ready to hang wall art, because in this case it comes pre-assembled, so customers can just unpack and hang the wall art directly on the wall. To create wall art, you used to need some graphic design skills. But if you don't have them, these days with AI tools you can still be in this business. I have tried several AI tools, including Midjourney, Leonardo AI and Freepik to create abstract wall art. I found Freepik to be the fastest and most affordable. These are some of the abstract art images it generated for me. Let me show you the process of generating one of these. So I give it a text prompt like an abstract painting with vibrant colors including pink, green and so on. I then selected uh, the image ratio we needed here 3 to 4 and then you can play with the mode. They have some new beta modes right now but I will just go with Flux Fast which I have used numerous times before and it worked just fine for these types of images. In a few seconds I get these two images. I can use both or pick one and save to my collection of AI wall art. I also like that here in Freepik I can upscale the images without using a third-party tool for it. Why do we need to upscale? Well, that's because AI tools always make the images kind of small for printing for the sake of 
faster generating, I guess. But we are going to use these images for printing, so the resolution has to be very good. And see, in FreePeak, I can get up to 4K upscale. I just need to make sure that this imagination setting is set to none, because I don't want AI to change anything in the image, just do the upscale. And here is the final quality of the image. It's now ready to be added to the product on Gelato. We left off here on adding the product to the store. On this step, I can actually decide to add more frame colors so customers can choose whatever matches their decor. Then just drop the design here and you can check in the right top that the quality of the image is good enough for printing on a size that we selected. It gives us the green light here with 274 dpi. We can now continue to mockups. Gelato has quite a lot of great mockups you can choose from. You can select here different environments, which will place your wall art in a living room or in a home office, in a lobby or in a bedroom. You can filter the results by free versus premium mockups. If you want to use some premium mockups and or do some edits in these mockups, you will need to upgrade to Gelato Plus plan. Again, you can sign up with my link gelato.com slash Anastasia and get a free 30-day trial of this paid plan. In addition to premium mockups, this plan also comes with up to 10% discount on all products. By the way, even on the free plan, there are plenty of beautiful free mockups you can choose from. Then you can continue to details and here you will see product title and description that include a lot of important details about the product, such as material and the model already are provided for you by Gelato. You can customize your product description right here further, but we will skip most of the steps for now and do the customization later in Shopify's product editor. Now the last step before we can sell our wall art is setting a price. I've just taken a quick look at the pricing page and it lays out exactly what the product costs, how much shipping will set us back and even the total profit per sale. You can check the price for different countries. I'm looking at the United States as the biggest market that we can target. And if I set the price, including shipping cost at $59.16, I will have a nice 27.64% profit margin. Then you can click publish and Gelato will begin publishing your product to your Shopify store, which might take a few minutes. When it's done, you will see confirmation that your product has been added to the store. Repeat this process for all of the products that you plan to sell. Then you can start selling your wall art all over the world because Gelato fulfills orders in 32 different countries, ensuring faster shipping times and reducing costs. If you're interested in using Gelato and want to get 50% off your first order, you can sign up with my link gelato.com slash Anastasia. It is my partner link again, so it, I might get a commission, which does help me and my team make better videos. So if you use it, thanks for supporting the channel. Next, we will edit your products on Shopify. And to edit your product pages, click products in the left side menu, find the product that you'd like to edit from the list, which is why it's helpful that we named the product earlier when we were adding it to the store. Then open the product page and from there, you can customize the product title and description. Gelato will set the default title and see the second part here? But I added at the beginning something specific for this art print design. Shopify's text editing tools make it easy to format the text nicely, including using bullet points for clarity. Next, you can always update the product photos here. You can select whichever mockups you like the most and if you don't like some of the photos, you can delete them on this step so that they don't show up on the product page. Your product is now ready to be sold and your product page should look clean, simple and professional. Now let's talk about adding product collections. So if you have many different types of products in your store, you can organize them by creating collections. Click collections in the left side menu, then click create a collection. Give your collection a name. I'm naming my, mine wall art for this example. You can organize collections based on the product type, niche or a theme, such as abstract art. Set the collection type to manual and then save your collection. 
then select the products that you want to have in this collection and then save. Then you can click here to check how this collection will look like in your Shopify store. Next, I will show you how to add payment processors and Shopify payments. Setting this up is actually very simple. First, go to the settings menu and click on payments. To enable this Shopify payments with credit cards, Shopify will need some information about your business type. For most users, this will be sole proprietor or sole trader, but the way it will be called depends on your country. Don't worry, this is standard procedure. Shopify needs this information for legal reasons to ensure that you're a verified seller and to protect customers from fraud. Make sure that your details are accurate. They will ask you a bit more details about the type of product that you want to sell and you have to select one of these categories. Then you will need to add your bank account details where you want payments to be deposited. And then send all this information to Shopify for verification. By default, PayPal is automatically installed. If the email that you use to register your Shopify store is linked to an existing PayPal account, you're all set. PayPal will start accepting payments right away. If not, you will need to either sign in to your PayPal account or create a new one using your store's email address. The next step is your custom domain verification. When you set up a Shopify store, by default, the platform gives you some random domain name like whichever numbers dot myshopify.com. But you can add a custom domain to help customers find your store. This is also important if you want to get traffic, for example, from Pinterest to your store, because Pinterest prefers pins that are linked to verified domains. You just need to click on buttons and follow some steps suggested on Shopify. They give us very clear instructions for most of the domain registers. In Namecheap, for example, I just needed to click a few buttons to add the custom DNS. I then checked the status of my domain in the Shopify store and it said that I still had to add a custom TXT. So I did that and the actual verification process started from that moment. It's very common for this process to take up to 48 hours, so don't worry if you don't see the verification status immediately. You just need to wait, there is no way to speed up this process on your end. And at this point, you've created collections updated your navigation and polished your product pages. With everything in place, your store will be ready to go live. And then you need to work on getting some visitors to your store. I personally have been active on Pinterest and getting free traffic from this platform for over seven years now. If you want to learn how to get free traffic from Pinterest to your store, watch my next video linked up there and I'll see you in that next one.